Up until this point, we have used the chi-squared distribution in the context of a goodness of fit test, where we're comparing a single distribution to some known or theorized population. But we might be interested in the two-sample version of this test, which we call a homogeneity test. In this kind of test, we're interested in comparing two distributions drawn from two different sample populations. So in our null hypothesis for a goodness of fit test, we're interested in if the underlying distribution from which our sample was drawn is equal to some known or theorized distribution. In a homogeneity test, we're interested in the underlying distribution from which sample 1 was drawn, and whether or not that's equal to the underlying distribution from which sample 2 was drawn. So this is very similar to the chi-square test we've done so far, with some slight differences. For example, the degrees of freedom in the goodness of fit test is the number of categories minus 1. In a homogeneity test, it's the number of categories minus 1 times the number of populations minus 1. The expected counts in a goodness of fit test involves each cell equaling some known or theorized count from a population, whereas in the homogeneity test, each cell is equal to the count of that population times the count of that category divided by the total sample size. We'll go through this in a second. In the end, though, the test statistic for a chi-squared distribution is exactly the same. We take our observed minus our expected squared divided by expected and sum them up across each cell. In a homogeneity test, it's exactly the same. So let's do an example. Let's say we have two samples from two different populations. There are factories that have been subject to some new pollution tax and factories that haven't been subject to that tax. In this case, our purpose is to compare the distribution of polluters from factories subject to that tax versus factories not subject to that tax. So our null hypothesis is that the polluter distribution of factories subject to the tax is equal to the polluter distribution of factories not subject to that tax. Now here's where things change. The degrees of freedom is the number of categories, which in this case is 3, low, medium, and high polluters, minus 1, times the number of populations minus 1. There are two populations here, factories subject to the tax and not subject to the tax. So the degrees of freedom here is 3 minus 1 times 2 minus 1, which is just 2 times 1, so 2. Now let's try to figure out how we can get the expected counts for this set of distributions. We have our observed counts, and we're now interested in getting the expected counts. And if you remember the formula from before, each cell equals the count of that population times the count of that category divided by the total sample size. So let's see what this might look like. For the first cell, we'll take the count of the population, factory subject to the population tax, and we'll multiply it by the count of the category, which is low polluters, and we'll divide that by the total sample size. So that gives us 100 times 90 divided by 300. For factory subject to the population tax and medium polluters, we do the same, except the count of the category is the medium polluters. The same goes for the high polluters. And then when we're interested in factories not subject to the pollution tax, instead of using the count of factories subject to the tax, we use the count of factories not subject to the tax, which in this case is 200. So we now just multiply this out, and we actually get an expected set of counts for each cell. Now the test statistic is just like the test statistic that we've used before. The chi-square test statistic is the observed count minus the expected count squared divided by the expected count summed up for each cell. So in the first one, we have our observed count of 40 of low polluters and factories subject to the tax, and then we have the expected one of 30. So we do 40 minus 30 squared divided by 30. And we can keep doing this for each cell between the observed and the expected. Once we sum all of them up, we get a chi-square statistic of 8.75. And remember that the degrees of freedom in this test is going to be 2. To get the p-value, we can just use Excel chi dist of 8.75 comma 2, and we get a p-value of about 1.3%. Since that p-value is less than 5%, we reject the null, which is to say that we reject the null hypothesis that the polluter distributions of factories subject to and not subject to the pollution tax are the same.